Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is the saddest nation, not the savage nation, the saddest nation, because I can't get the sound to run right, I can't get the levels right. We're renaming the show now, the saddest nation. Every song I ask for, they play the wrong song. Every level I ask for, they play the wrong level. But the show must go on. Welcome to the Savage Nation. The question today, you can turn the the noise off. Thanks, Robert. Uh, It is Rock and Roll Friday. We'll try to get a song up now and again that plays properly. The issue today is, is Obama a Muslim? Why do so many people think he's a Muslim? Why does the media insist he's a Christian? Yes, it's come up again. And what's astonishing to me is that Hillary Clinton, do I have to describe who she is? Do I have to describe to you what she is? Has the nerve to say to Trump, start behaving like a president. But let's begin at the beginning. I wasn't going to do this today. I've got to guide you where my head is coming from and where my head is going. Last night I was watching a documentary on Mao Zedong, who is the model for several of Barack Obama's chief staff members. They've even said so. One of them said that Mao Zedong is her hero. He killed at least 45 million fellow Chinese who were not politically correct. Now, you gotta understand how serious this topic is. I have long felt that this administration is filled with Maoists. People have called them Marxists. They've called them Leninists. But they don't quite understand who they really are. They are more politically uh, associated with Mao Zedong than anyone else. The only thing missing are the deaths and the death camps. The fact is, though, the style, the techniques, and the methodology is all that of Mao Zedong. Many of you go to come out of colleges where you were subjected to brainwashing. Brainwashing going back, frankly, to your elementary school days. Brainwashing on what to think about gays. Brainwashing what to think about global warming. Brainwashing on what to think about illegal aliens but it's all brainwashing. In fact, astonishingly, last week, the president himself said that his daughters know that global warming is real and that the future generation will embrace this more so than the current generation, right out of Mao Zedong. The only difference is is that in Mao's time, they took 10 and 12 year old children and turned them into killers. They called them the Red Guard and they had them kill their own parents, their own teachers, Anyone from the old generation was tortured and killed. If you think I'm making this up, just do a quick search on Mao Zedong. And you say, what does that have to do with Barack Obama? He's a nice Christian man, is he? Is he a nice Christian man? Is that why he's flooding America with illegal aliens? Is that why he's flooding America with Muslims? Is that why he doesn't follow the law? Is that why he gets away with virtually anything because he's a nice Christian man? Well, there's only one man speaking to this issue. That's Donald Trump. How much longer he will get away with it, with the hatred coming at him from the low-life salenterates in the media is a question of how strong he really is. I hope he's in it for the long haul. I hope he can take it. I've taken it for 21 years, so I think he can take it for another year. Uh, Many in the media who are conservatives have taken it for a number of years, so I'm sure Donald could take the hatred for another year, although I'm not sure. And I'll tell you why I'm not sure. Because we in radio have built up a resistance to the hate from the vermin on the left. The hatred from the Soros-generated machines of hatred like Media Matters. They are front groups for these Maoist organizations that want to destroy the opposition. We have learned how to put up with these insects. The question is, though, when you take a man like Donald Trump, who's used to being revered and as a member of society and respected at the highest levels when suddenly they turn on him because they're all a bunch of jackals and cowards. That's the question. Can he take this being, the, 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 you know, being ostracized? So at the same time I was watching the history of Mao Zedong and I was going to talk about that today. Late at night, I couldn't sleep because I ate a lot of 
jam yesterday, some French jam I rarely eat. I needed the energy for the show. I was flying on it last night. I couldn't go to sleep, so I went, all right, so I watched. Luckily, I was searching for a movie for months that I started to see on an airplane entitled Leviathan. It's a Russian language film. It's not for everyone. It's a drama. It's slow moving. It's thoughtful. It's one of the finest films I've ever seen in my life. Now, if you first watch it, you'll turn it off because there's nobody with uh, bling on their teeth, nobody rubbing their crotch, nobody picking up a gun and gratuitously shooting their mother. In other words, it's not an American movie produced by Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Geffen. It's a, it's a work of art. And what it's about is a man who lives in a little fishing village on the Barents Sea with his wife, his second wife, and his teenage son. And a local corrupt communist official, well, it's after communism, but he's just like the old Politburo communists, wants to take away his house that his father and grandfather lived on. He's a mechanic, a garage mechanic, and they want to buy it from him and he won't sell. It's all about how they set him up and steal his land from him and what goes on when there's tyranny in a local, in a local little uh, you know, bureaucracy. He reminded me about everything wrong with every government I've ever encountered. From the local DMV to the president himself, that's what this movie represented to me. Hillary Clinton embodies this man, this evil of this little mayor in this northern Russian town. She is an absolute embodiment of the old Politburo of the Soviet Union. And so I said, well, how do I put all of this together for the audience? How do I put together my attempts to instruct them that Mao Zedong is alive and well in the Obama administration? Oh, there's no death camps, there's no killing, but the indoctrination tactics are identical. And then how do I get across to them that Hillary Clinton and the entire Democrat Party is an offshoot, a Frankenstein child of the old Soviet Politburo? How do I explain this to the average American who doesn't know anything? Well, it's a challenge. And frankly, I don't know that I'm up to the challenge. If anyone's up to the challenge, it's me, but I don't know that I'm up to it. Because I know the media as well as anybody in the world. And I also know that the mass media has changed. It's uh, gone to a lowest common denominator. Lower and lower every day. The denominator of the media goes lower and lower in order to appeal to the non-English speakers, in order to appeal to the people who are not only uneducated but stupid to begin with, and then in order to appeal to those who have disavowed teaching, school, scholarship. So the media has degenerated. So how do you do a thing like this, I said to myself. How do you talk about Mao Zedong? How do you talk about Leviathan, the Russian movie? And how do you make it mean anything to a mass audience of the type that you have? And then I wake up and there's this controversy about a man at a Trump campaign rally saying Obama's a Muslim. And Trump says very reasonably, we're going to be looking at a lot of different things. A lot of people are saying that. A lot of people are saying bad things are happening out there. And right away, the very vermin in the media, the little children of Stalin, the children of Mao, are out there saying that oh, Trump is a bad man. And there she is, the head of the uh, Clinton machine, the most hidden criminal activity I've ever seen in my life occurring under her watch. Daring to say that, Clinton, uh, that Trump should start behaving like a president. Well, uh, there's a lot to be said about that, but it's not about Trump. It's about her refusal to debate. It's about her refusal to tell us where she was the night Benghazi was, was burned and the ambassador was killed. And many other stories like, what about the hundreds of millions of dollars funneled into your husband's library from foreign governments and people in America who want favors? Lots of things to talk about. So uh, we will talk about them. And I ask you, when you listen to these sound bites, you can join the show by calling 855-400-7282. I'm going to ask you whether you think Obama is a Muslim. And why do you think so many people think he's a Muslim? But before we begin this, I want to tell you my opinion. By definition, he is a Muslim, unless he converted to Christianity, and I don't know about that. He, his father was a Muslim from Kenya. There's no crime in that. But that's a naked... How do you argue with facts? A lawyer would say to you, that I am not emotional, I deal with facts, I'm a lawyer. If your father is a Muslim, and you go to a Muslim school as a child, you are a Muslim unless you convert to Christianity. Maybe he converted to Christianity. Now that isn't even the issue. 
because not all Muslims uh, are against the principles of democracy. Many of them are trying to destroy ISIS. He doesn't happen to be one of them. That's the problem. The Muslim head of Egypt, the largest Muslim country in the world, a Muslim is trying to destroy ISIS. Obama will not help him. The president of Jordan, the leader of Jordan, the king of Jordan, is a Muslim. Obama will not send him the heavy weapons that he wants. So it's not a question of whether Obama is a Muslim. It's a question of what kind of Muslim is he? And many have said he's a front for the Muslim Brotherhood. Many of I've gotten emails from people in the highest levels of the intelligence world who are no longer in the government. They've all been purged like Stalin did, who swear on a stack of Bibles that the Muslim Brotherhood is running this country. You say, oh, are you crazy? Well, look at what's going on. So when this starts to bubble up from the people, I got to tell you, there's a prairie fire to use a leftist phrase. Yes, my Democrat leftist friends, there is a prairie fire burning on the question of whether not is Obama a Muslim really, but which side is he really on? Because nobody really knows. It's hard to say. And moreover, so from my point of view, since I'm dealing with the facts, since his father was a Muslim, and then when the father went back to Kenya, his mother married another Muslim, this one from Indonesia, I think. He was a Muslim. That's two, two fathers. And according to the Muslim religion, uh, you're, you inherit the patri through the patrilineal descent. So by definition, he's a Muslim. So the next question is, well, okay, what does he practice? I don't know. He's the only president who doesn't even pretend to go to church on Sunday. I mean, you got to give it to Hillary and Bill. They had their friends in Hollywood mock up a large Bible with an overly large cross for all of the stooges out there who believe in God to see. And Bill would chuckle his way into a church on Sunday. You got to give it to him. You got to give him credit. At least he pretended to be a Christian to satisfy all the little schmucks out there in his mind who actually go to these churches and believe in it. But Muslim, uh, but Obama rather, doesn't even make the pretense. The, the, he doesn't pretend to be a Christian. How would you know he's a Christian? By what? By what act? Tell me how you would know what his religion is and does it matter? Well, I think it does matter, especially when we're under assault by radical Islam and he won't even say it's radical Islam. Yeah, I think it's an important question in a time when radical Islam is on the march to know whether our president, uh, let's put it to you this way, where our president stands. So the minute I return, we're going to play the sound bites of Trump, uh, uh, Christie, and Hillary Clinton on the Muslim question on the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome to the uh, second opening of the Savage Nation. We have pulled the shortest straw. We are definitely... Uh, let us say, picked for a certain destiny as a nation. And many of us know it. We know that the vermin who run the New World Order have chosen America for a certain destiny. And we the people are the last chance we have to save ourselves. It's certainly not the corrupt Hillary Clinton. And it may be Donald Trump, if he can survive the onslaughts of the left-wing vermin, he might just might save the nation. So the issue comes up because of clip number one, which we must listen to, of whether or not Obama is a Muslim. Listen to clip one. Okay, this man, I like this guy. I walk from White Plains. Amen. Okay. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. Certificate this man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm-hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of it? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. All right, so what's wrong with that? How many years have we talked about the Muslim training camps around America where they're training with guns in country properties? It's a fact. There's several in New York State. We've reported on them. New York State troopers know about them. 